bring up Dale Earnhardt there and you had such a close relationship with him. What were some of your favorite memories of Dale? I know you two were really close. What, what immediately comes to mind when you think of your old pal Dale Earnhardt? Yeah, well, I mean, there, most of my memories of Dale, I mean, I had a lot of memories on the track, but most of my memories of Dale were off the track. Um, you know, we, uh, <clears throat> we, we used to hang out a lot away. He'd call me. Uh, we had, a, we had a, a great relationship because I never asked him for anything. I mean, I didn't ask him for a hat, n- autograph, nothing. And, uh, and we, he would sit and talk. We would talk medical things. We'd talk everything but racing, quite honestly. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and, and, uh, and he's, he's actually the one back in the early 90s that asked me about – we were having a meeting one day, and I, I flew into Charlotte. We would, he picked me up. We went over to his farm, and he asked me about LASIK surgery, about eye surgery. He said, you know, what do you know about LASIK surgery? I said, it was just getting started back in the early 90s. I said, well, <clears throat> it's a great way. They go in with a laser, and they, and they do these little cuts in your, in your cornea and helps you see better. He said, how about looking at that for me? And I said, is that your problem you can't see? Is that why you run over everybody on the racetrack? He said, I don't run over <laughs> He said, he said, I don't run over them because I can't see. I run over because they won't get out of my way. And I said, well, I, I said, well, I, and, but, but we had, uh, you know, we, uh, we, we were in Daytona. My daughter works in, Jesse works in NASCAR. And, and it's funny, I, one of the favorite stories is that we were in Daytona. We're down on Dale's boat uh, at the marina there. And uh, I'm, up, I'm up on top of the boat with the captain watching him do some fishing stuff. And my daughter and, and my wife, Joni, and Teresa, Dale's wife, were down in the main salon there. My daughter's just crawling. She's not walking yet. So I go back down there in a few minutes, and I see Dale standing with my daughter. He's got her by the top of her little <clears throat> little uh, jumper, and he's bouncing her up and down, and she's putting one foot down, another foot down, and one foot down. And, and I said, and I said, man, what are you doing with my daughter? He said, and Dale said, I'm teaching this young one to walk. He said, I'm going to teach this young one to walk. He said, she's, she's strong enough, old enough. She's scooting around here on the crawl, and she's going to learn to walk before she leaves. And I said, okay, I'll make a deal with you. I said, you can teach her to walk, but you sure as heck aren't going to teach her to drive. I've seen you drive. Like that, you know? <laughs> yeah, he, he was just a good, just a good friend. I mean, just a, just a really, really good friend. He, um, um, I, every Thanksgiving when I did college football, I would do the Texas, Texas A&M rivalry game. And one, one year it'd be in college station. One year it'd be in Austin. And he came into the house back in Charlotte and he, he turned the game on. He knew that I was doing a game and, and he saw me on the game. And he also knew that it was snowing sideways up in the mountains where I live. So he gets up on the, gets on the phone. He calls my wife up on the, we live on top of the mountain in Blowing Rock at the time. And he said, Hey, I just saw Docs doing a football game in Texas. She said, yeah. He said, you're, you're getting ready to have that young and aren't you? Cause she was eight, eight months pregnant. He said, she said, yeah, Dale, but I'm fine. He said, no, you can't be up there. He said, it's snowing sideways in the mountains up there. So you can't be up there by yourself. What happens? You got to go somewhere. He said, I'm sure Doc took the four wheel drive to go to the airport. She said, yeah, Dale, but I'm fine. I'm, I'm, she said, nope, nope. I'm going to send some guys up there <clears throat> and uh, I'm going to send a guy up there with a four wheel drive truck. He's going to stay in the basement until Doc gets back. And if you have to go anywhere, if you have to go to the hospital anywhere, he'll take you. And she said, Dale, you don't need to do that. He said, no, I don't want you to be up there by yourself. I mean, that's the kind of guy he was. Wow. And, 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 you know, he just, he just, you know, you'd never know that. And the irony is <clears throat> that last year, this past January, we were at the NASCAR Hall of Fame and my daughter, Jessie, went with me that night and we're sitting there. And when the, when the Hall of Fame event was over, we're walking out the door and a guy walks up to me and says, hey, Doc, he said, do you remember me? He said, I used to be Dale's coach driver. I said, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, I know who you are. He said, is this your daughter? I said, yeah. He said, was this the one your wife was, was pregnant with years ago? I said, yeah. He said, well, I'm the guy that Dale was sending up there to stay with Joni until you got home. He said, wow. he said, and this is the little girl. And, and my daughter lit up and just started crying. She said, oh my gosh, I've heard that story, but now it becomes real because, <laughs> you know, and I didn't know who he was sending up there, but you know, <clears throat> that's, he said, he said, I, I'm the one. He said, and finally your wife talked to him about sending anybody, but he already called me and said, Hey, gas up that truck. You're going up the mountain in the snow. <laughs> uh, but how about, how about that? Just a good guy. Just a good, That's good person. Hey, race fans. If you enjoyed that clip, check out the full episode on YouTube and all podcast platforms.